Hey everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's on the Tube, and welcome back if this is your seventh DC Stargirl episode review for season two. I am still a little bit riley from the Emmys weekend festivities. Um, I've adjusted to normalcy, but it doesn't feel like normal, so to speak, which is kind of how Yolanda was feeling this week on this week's episode of Stark, which perfectly. I said this last week that last week felt like the mid-season finale. This also felt like like the halfway mark of the story. Like we know what's happening and we know what the stakes are, and we're in a really solid place to see where the remaining second half is going to take us. And honestly, I I'm saying this. I think I said this before in season one. I don't. I'll say it again. Y I'm going to butcher her name. Um, Yvette Mont Monterey. Um, I I'm, I'm sorry, I've butchered her name is by far one, is someone to keep an eye on in the future. Similar to how I said on my High School Musical reviews that Olivia Rodrigo, definitely keep an eye on her. Um, Yola, um, not Yola, um, Yvette, definitely keep an eye on her because this was probably her best performance in the entire show. Um, I, this episode brought out, this was definitely a Yolanda episode and it wasn't the way I was expecting it, but it was also, it made sense for where things go. And, and I was was watching this episode and I was remembering my season two predictions video I, I produced last year was I wanted to see the real effects of killing Brainwave in front. Uh, I wanted to see it in season two. And here, we, here it is. And honestly, they're doing it the best way possible, even making it make sense and make work to in store. And you're honestly questioning yourself, what is real? What isn't because of what's going on in the actual story? So everything's coming together perfectly, and it's so far, and everything I want to do, we're doing. Um, everything seems to be running perfectly, so I'm very happy about it. But um, but enough about me fanboying. Now let's get through the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of Star Girl. We begin in the church. I want to say, do we begin in the church? I want to say we begin in the church. So uh, it's been a little bit since the battle with Eclipse. So everyone's still like, you know. Technically, they're not me. They're on. They're, it's it's like a. This is kind of like the one aspect I will say about a CW show or a superhero show where, like, here's the big fret. They have this big confrontation with the big fret, and then l literally afterwards they l l go under, and we don't hear anything about them for weeks, and we just have other stuff doing. That's the only TV side of things. Like, oh, yeah, definitely. If this was a movie, like we would immediately be like five minutes from now, we would be seeing them like take on Eclipso again. But this definitely benefits the story as we're, you know, taking a step back, seeing how each of the characters are kind of dealing with things in a post, well, not a post finish Eclipse, or post like Eclipse was out in Blue Valley. He's affecting the weather. Like Blue Valley is doom and gloomy. It's supposed to be bright and sunny here in summer. For Yolanda, she's at the church trying to confess to something, but again, she just... Uh, is having her brainwave attack. She's having the, um, the, the the headaches, the vibrations, and it, it's becoming a lot for her, and she leaves the church. Then we got to the time frame that today is July 3rd, and that um, Yolanda's still working in the diner. Um, everyone in Blue Valley, despite the weather, is still in um, 4th of July spirits. They're still happy, ever-go-lucky. They're decorating the streets, ready for the fireworks and the barbecues and all that such. Meanwhile, poor Yolanda is still working a ship over at the diner, which I will say that, yeah, again, it, it is her building her own independence, her making her own money. Uh, but considering her current mood state and her cl customer clientele, it's honestly not the best um, condition for her to work with right now. And also, to be honest with you, I've also worked... Similar to her, when when I had my first job, my first job was at a McDonald's, which uh, I kid you not, there's so many stories from that. I, I'm still surprised we haven't produced a, some type of show where we talked about that yet. I'm actually surprised. Maybe someday in the future, who knows? Um, Yolanda's friend, who works with her, one of the um, the senior waitresses there, um, takes over one of her uh, most Riley customers. But sadly, it turns out she's been affected a little bit by Eclipse. So as her eye turns purple, as she pours <laughs> scalding hot coffee on his shoulder, and everyone's just like you know running to him. And even those guys, like a pretty dickish you know customer. He's still a customer. You still can't really treat him like crap. So everyone runs to him, trying to take care of him. The manager looks at the waitress and says, "Look." You're probably just overworked. You're overtired. You've been doing all these double shifts. I think it's time for you to, like, you know, take a day off and go home. And 
it's kind of it's so interesting in how they're able to do this show where it's like even getting the smallest information about her it, you feel for her because she's mentioning oh I, my mother's sick i need the money you know we i need all these extra hours and i just feel so bad because like damn like I'm, I'm pretty sure the waitressing job isn't giving her that much cash so i'm like thinking to myself damn I really feel sorry for her. like that that, entire, that day of work it needs she needs it a lot, but the manager won't let her work and she lets her she lets her go for the day. Uh, so during all the commotion, Yolanda is just watching, confused, dazed as well, and she spots a little kid, which of course it's Eclipso in children form, but we don't know, but they don't know that yet. But Yolanda hands him a little bit of a lollipop, tells him it's gonna be okay, don't worry about it. But secretly, the kid's like maniacally evil and he like teleports out the window and you know does this whole creepy scary yeah that kid probably has the best job in the world right now Br -br probably does Br probably making the big bucks meanwhile for everyone else what else do we got going on i know courtney gives beth a call about like any search for eclipso because of the goggles but still no update on that nor an update on the on the goggle front with dr midnighter there's no no update about him so they're kind of like, they're, they're very much in cruise mode right now. They're just trying their best right now to um, make the best of a really bad situation. Um, Barbara is facing a little bit of a tough town over. Um, I keep forgetting her job. Like, I know, is this city council? Is it this organization that Icicle found? They never clarify what her job is. Like, I've, I think they did. I just haven't paid much attention to remember it. Because uh, there is... There's kind of like just, of course, I was with any small town, like financial constraints and they're dealing with like letting go of a factory because there's just no real money coming in for it. And Barbara's just thinking about like the families, they need the income, so they need to find the money. And one of her suggestions is to sell Icicle's collection of sorts as, while well, I will not pay off whatever they need to do to cover this thing, um, it will at least give them some sort of cash flow to at least kickstart the process and everyone but this one lady um votes for it and again everyone loves barbara so that's great um but also a little bit more of a suspicious tale is uh when she's leaving the the conference room she sees like a weird voice you want now see she hears a weird voice she walks around she looks for something then she sees like a shade like mist appear on the corner of the of the ceiling and blood comes out of it but you know, nothing pops out of it. So it's like, it's a little creepy and kind of also like kind of plays the question. That is definitely the Shade's um, powers at work. So like, what did happen to the Shade? Where is he? Is he hurt? Is he alive? There's a lot of questions here. A lot of questions. We don't, we're not getting a lot of answers. Um, Barbara, uh, not Barbara, um, Courtney's walking through town. She runs into um, Jordan, um, Icicle's son, and... He, he invites her to kind of like go around town and start decorating the stuff as he and his father used to do back in the day when he was still alive. Um, Courtney's immediately down. She gets a little update from uh, Mikey that she, he's about to start JSA training today. And at first, it seemed like Courtney was going to go and tack along to watch his training, but she decides to stay behind and um, hang out with Jordan, give him give him some time since, like, again, every time they have a thing, there's a romantic connection. She was, she was going to run off and save the day. Uh, but for one, she's actually giving him a chance and having fun, you know, going around town, actually developing a relationship, developing a connection. Sadly, Yolanda gets out of work and needs to talk to Courtney, but immediately she sees her across the street with Jordan, and she's not feeling like third wheeling today, plus the whole, like, he's related to Icicle, and after taking care of the, the young ISA last week, I don't think it's in Yolanda's best interest right now to go um, near anyone that isn't the center of the ISA, so she decides to go um, loner mode, walks away, heads, heads around the church, uh, is about to do another confession session, and immediately when she walks in, I find, like, is this the waitress from before? And I'm just thinking to myself, huh, I guess the waitress is gonna get more to do in this episode as, as we, as I thought, but then now it turns out to be her mom, which is ironic since recently I watched an older clip of Stargirl for, for some reason, I don't know what I was craving, I was just watching something, and I completely forgot that was her mom for a second until she mentioned it because it's been so long we've only seen her in episode four and now we're seeing her in episode seven of yeah episode seven of season two so it's been a little bit of a stretch so that's why i was like a little confused like who are you like what are you doing here what's your purpose here 
Uh, turns out the pastor, while well, he didn't conf he didn't tell the mother everything about the confessional, he still had to let her know, like, yo, I think your daughter's not really 100% right now. And mom is, of course, back to whole blaming Yolanda about the picture thing, blaming her about, like, everything, but treating her like crap. Thankfully, the pastor just looks at the mom like, look, that's not what she needs right now. I'm pretty sure everyone wants to move on from the last year. You know, all she needs right now is some love and support. And the mom's finally, like, listening. It's like, okay. And she's about to start her attempt at repairing her relationship with her daughter. Um, but a mysterious figure passes through the church and leaves um, in a very green tunic-looking suit. Not Link, not Link from Legend of Zelda, not that, no. Um, Yolanda goes, goes after him, but um, he disappears out of nowhere. And I think we cut back to the yeah the 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 the, the lot the the auto the auto shop where they're about to start Mike's JSA training, which is basically trying to repair um, Stripe. And of course, Mike immediately thinks, "Oh, we're gonna do cool new upgrades and new attachments and new uh, weapons and new like a new look." And no, 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 no. You, you don't get to start with the cool stuff. You gotta do the menial labor, which in this, in this instance is. Taking all the lug nuts. I'm not just about he didn't say clean the lug nuts. He just said you're going to have to put back all the lug nuts. And there's a ton of them. And it's a giant robot. So these lug nuts are pretty heavy. Um, so poor Mike with those scrawny arms has to like literally screw them back into the to the robot. And I'm just thinking to myself. I, I would I would see like a, a short episode about this. I'd be in. That's how much I'm sold on this premise. Um, so he does that. Pats is being the supported dad just, you know, from a distance, like, you know, patience is a virtue, you, this is like the first lesson any superhero or any body in a superhero team no, learns. Um, but eventually, of course, with Mike and his usual, like, looking around and touching things that aren't belonging to him, um, he looks on the, one of the tables and finds the remnants of the Black Diamond, which still has s small traces of Eclipso's power, which is enough to manifest a little bit of fear into Mike, which is... A bunch of leeches, which is honestly kind of scary, but not really scary at the same time. It's, it's kind of weird. I, I don't know. I don't find leeches to be that scary. Of course, if they're on, if they're on my skin, that'd be a different story. But thankfully, um, that's not the case here. Uh, anyway, um, so the leeches attack him. Um, but again, it turns out to be a mirage from Eclipse. So as um, Pat comes in, looks around, and doesn't see any sort of leech remnants anywhere, so it's definitely Eclipse would work here. And the only reason they still have the diamond in their possession, the remnants at least, is if this was the only thing that can get, contain Eclipse, so this might be the only way the only way to actually beat it. So Pat's still doing some more research on that. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think we just cut to the next day, I believe. I don't, I don't think we'd do anything else. Um, we get to the next day. Um, Courtney and Yolanda are back in the in the in the class, and sadly, they got a new sub teacher. So summer school was not canceled. Sadly, I would have wished summer school was canceled because it sucks. I mean, who wants to go to school during the summer, like in hot ass weather? Come on, no one wants to. No. Um, Courtney's often you know distracted by by uh, actually was it Cameron not Jordan? I must be confused. Like I think it's Cameron. Isaac son, let's just call my school junior again because I'm, I'm, I'm already questioning myself again. Um, he's texting him and it seems like they're already like at a solid basis to like maybe be something down the line now that they had a little bit of hangout time to themselves. Yolanda's just watching, low-key jealous that Courtney's attention is away from her and that she's got all these problems and all those sorts and um, she gets a message and uh, it's from Henry. Um, Henry Jr., by the way. And she looks, and it's a picture of her across the, the way, and she looks up, and we see Henry for a little bit, so Yolanda goes after him, and still having the headaches, and, you know, the, the headaches increase as she gets closer to Henry. Eventually, they do meet in the cafeteria, which is somehow miraculously repaired from the fight with um, the JSA versus the ISA, so I'm, like, thinking to myself, damn, their cleanup crew probably got paid o overtime for this, or they got screwed into doing overtime for free. That's my opinion. Uh, eventually, Yolanda does catch up with Henry, and Henry tells her that, you know, I'm only around here because I'm still... They don't say hell. They, they, they just say hell, hell, but they don't clarify if he's in hell. He just mentions about Burns, like, I'm only here because, you know, there's still some unresolved things here, so they can't put me in the grade above. 
Um, Yolanda says, no, I forgive you. Don't worry about it, but it's not genuine. She's just saying that because it, it felt like it needs to be said. And shortly after, he disappears, and the return of Brainwave appears. That's right. The actor is back. I forgot his name, but he's back in all of his green glory. And I'm just thinking to myself, damn. Doesn't look like he aged a day. So he's back and, you know, some a little bit of exposition that, you know, he's never going to let go. Like, you know, he's he's now a part of Yolanda forever and um, there's nothing she can do, she could do to get rid of him. And he's just going to keep playing mind tricks on her whenever he wants because there's nothing they can do to, to get rid of him. Uh, but it turns out the entire thing's been a dream. Yolanda wakes up. Everyone's just concerned for her since I'm pretty sure she was yelling in her dream. Eventually, she storms out the classroom, uh, meets up with Courtney outside in the lockers. And just tells her, yeah, I, I've seen Brainwave. I saw Henry. They're getting worse. They've been getting worse. Courtney's just theorizing it is Eclipso. But Yolanda said, no, this has been happening way before Eclipso was a threat. So this is my thing. This is my demon. This is my problem right now. And there's not really a big indication for Yolanda to keep going like this. She, she's just thinking like another thing right now. But Courtney's telling her, please don't, don't give up. Um, let's tell the team about this while you killing Brainwave. Let's be honest with them. They're going to be supportive of you. We're going to get through this. Don't worry about it. And it's enough for Yolanda to believe, yeah, things will be fine. So I want to say, do we get another scene somewhere else or we just come straight to it? I want to say. Yeah, I want to say we just come straight to it. Yeah, so. They meet up in Courtney's house because um, Pat's still busy with um, JSA training with Mike. Um, so the four of them talk. Um, they reveal what Yolanda did to Brainwave um, last season with the with the battle. And honestly, Rick is very neutral, similar to Cordy. He's like, you did what you had to do. You survived. You lived. Don't worry about it. Beth, on the other hand, being a more of a conservative, more like very by the books type person, she's not 100% down, down with this. Which is honestly expected, you know, with any superhero. Just because you're on a superhero team doesn't mean you all have to agree on the same value. Like, yeah, you're all good guys. Yeah, you're all helping saving the planet. But you all have your different ideals, your own different opinions on certain things, which I understand Beth does have her own, and she doesn't agree with what Yolanda did. There was probably a better option out there, but um, that was enough for Yolanda to snap a little bit, seeing that, you know, not any one of them would have been able to kill Brainway if they could, because, again, they're... All playing the part of the hero, so and normally heroes don't kill. I know there's been some deviation from that in recent years with other movies and shows, but here they're not. And Yolanda is kind of brutally honest with them, saying that Eclipso is a very powerful Fred. I killed Brainwave because I, I had to kill Brainwave because I had no choice. With Eclipso, we have definitely no choice. We have to kill him. The diamond's gone. We can't trap him again. We have to kill him. And I don't want y'all to go for the same trauma that I'm going for right now. Even though Eclipse was just basically a, a, an ancient de deity, he's still a villain. He's still like a he's still someone you can kill. And Yolanda doesn't want anyone else to go through that, so um, she leaves them alone. And even after that speech, and everyone's just kind of dumbfounded and speechless, considering the fact, yeah, Yolanda's right. Like they're none of them are planning to kill anyone by this point. Or at least for Eclipso's sake, they're, that's not their headspin base right now. And Yolanda's technically willing to go up to the bat and like finish it once and for all, once to get the opportunity. But it's still not right in a way. Uh, I want to say we had we do head back to the church. I'm not sure if we're missing any scenes, but we do head back to the church. Yolanda's about to do yet another confession. Um, this time, actually admitting she killed someone, brainwave in this case. But before she's able to keep going, um, father's the father's not there. It's actually Brainwave. So I wouldn't say this was a fight, more like a confrontation, uh, because Brainwave was just usually using his trick, his mind tricks against Yolanda. That was basically it. Uh, we do get more exposition here that um, that yeah. So when of course I can't, I gotta predict like when he died, he he used his abilities to transmit a part of himself into Yolanda so that. When he died, his conscience would be in Yolanda. And also, Yolanda having the self-doubts and the judgments, it was enough for Brainwave to get enough power to slowly start taking control of her. And it seems like at the current moment, it's like a 50-50 split. But it's, it, it, that definitely does seem to be the case. But um, Yolanda, of course, obviously gets mad about him, starts fighting him, gets back in the costume. Well, 
Dear Edgar gets back in the costume. He manages. She manages to get a couple few few good blows on him, but um, he keeps tra- transmitting in and out as Henry. Uh, I, I want to say, yeah. They're, so they're getting close, and it's getting pretty dire. Courtney Courtney shows up um, to take care of Brainwave, but and I initially thought like, wait, Brainwave can wait. Star Girl can see Brainwave. Then I'm like, well, is is this really Eclipse related? Or what else is going on here? Uh, but no, it's it's a part free flashback sequence to someone or, or just an imagination. Brainwave take care, takes care of Courtney. Uh, but Yolanda springs in and actually gets to slash Brainwave in the neck again. Uh, but however, uh, he transforms himself into Henry. And of course, obviously the guilt and the shame comes back to Yolanda as she can't deal with that right now. And she really does not want to deal with that. Um, but thankfully, the nightmare ends when Courtney shows up with the staff, kind of semi-powered up again, you know, not 100% like last week, but kind of coming back together, piece by piece. Um, she puts she puts her hands on the staff, causing her, causing the memories of the mirages to finally go away from Yolanda, giving her a little bit of peace. Um, but however, during this conversation, because of this experience... Yolanda knows now that she doesn't want to be a hero anymore. She doesn't want to be in the same position again to kill someone. And if that means never being Wildcat again, if that never, if that means never fighting again, that's great for her. She gives up being Wildcat and leaves poor old Courtney alone in the in the in the church. Uh, we cut the later that night where Courtney is trying to attempt to contact Yolanda, but sadly goes straight to voicemail. I know how that feels like. And eventually, there is a, an answered call, but it's from Yolanda's mom telling her that, look, Yolanda doesn't want to talk to you right now. She's staying very distant from you. It's all your fault. She's like this. You know, just stay away from my daughter. And also, she does another call to the to the diner saying that, oh, Yolanda is quitting. You know, don't put her on the schedule anymore. She's done there. And one of the waitresses was kind of vehemently bummed out by it, but she does tell her, like, hey, just tell Yolanda if she ever changes her mind. There will always be a place of work here for her. Um, but however, this that was kind of a, a weird, suspicious um, sequence to have since like we didn't we didn't get to see Yolanda, um, you know, actually like normal when in these, in these sort of moments you would get like that one small scene where like they're kind of like they made that big moment, they made that big big decision that they're not going to do this certain thing anymore, and that's going to sprawl off to a bunch of new activities for her to do, but or just giving her a peek of like what things are right now, but we don't get to see that. Which is a little bit weird. Instead, the next scene is Beth in bed with her goggles and just, you know, trying to get some sleep, but outside is the kid. Yeah, Bizarro. Uh, not Bizarro. Eclipso. Damn, my brain is kind of fried. I had a long morning today. I'll tell, I'll tell everyone that, that story some other time, but... Uh, the kid's outside, giggling evilly, indicating that Beth is next on, on his list to tear apart. Uh, but what happened to y- Yolanda? Who knows? There's still so much questions to ask, but um, that ends this week's episode of Stargirl, unfortunately. But yeah, but this was a nol- another solid episode for the season. Definitely p- paint the picture more, Yolanda, and like what her inner demons are right now. It seems like they're starting to like go back to that style of things while we're waiting for Eclipso to rear his big-ass purple head again. Ugh. Um, getting to see more, more again, seeing um, Yvette's performance this episode definitely was one of the hallmarks for me. It definitely stood out like, you know, a big thumbs up. It really was. Um, getting to see Brainwave again and his son again was pretty cool. I'm pretty sure this is probably a one or two time thing, so I won't expect him to show up anymore. Especially, I'm pretty sure Yolanda is taking a bench for a while. So, um, But it was really cool to see them again in costume. Um, back to it. It's been so long since we've seen them that I did kind of miss them, but... Thankfully, they were here. They actually helped Yolanda out, out sell the performance and selling her um, her mindset. Because if I had that guy in my head, I would probably go local too. Everyone, let me tell you what. Um, but this 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 season, this um, episode definitely leaves more questions than answers, and definitely gives us an interesting picture to what the second half of the season will truly look like when we come back next week. Um, but so for me, I'm gonna give this episode two thumbs up. I highly enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below what did you think of this week's episode of DC's Stargirl. Let me know. I'm having a conversation down below. Come on. Let's do it. So I believe that's going to do it for me tonight, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's in the Tube from Action X, 
um, reviewing every episode in the second season of DC Stargirl. If you want to know what we're doing normally on What's the Two besides our Stargirl reviews, we're currently doing Heels episode reviews each and every Tuesday mornings after a brand new episode on Sunday nights on Stars. Um, we're off next week on that, so a bit of an iffy start. And then starting this week, on Friday morning, we're going to be getting our Doom Patrol Season 3 episode review. Um, every, normally, will be every Friday morning after our thir- after Thursday's new episode. Um, but because HP Max is giving us the gift of three episodes in one sitting, um, similar to what we did for Season 2, we will be doing each episode, giving it its own review, its own time to speak, its own time to breathe. And it, I think it will come up with a much better product over for just to like, n- and not even just to like save a couple of video slots for that. So I'm excited for Doom Patrol to come back. I'm really am. It, it's been a long time. Can't wait to see how they wrap up season two's um, immense cliffhanger. So I'm excited. I really can't wait. Uh, but also starting this Monday, the rookie season four, baby episode reviews starting up on Monday mornings. I cannot wait. It has been a very, very long time since we got them. And sad to say, it's going to be a pretty stressful one since uh, my new work schedule. Um, honestly, me going into like when we wrap things up for um, our last full television season of reviews, um, last May and June, I initially thought that, oh, okay, so for my job, like, Rookie would be everything's the same, and then Nancy Drew would be the issue, the outlier. Actually, no, because it's actually the Rookie now that's a little bit complicated, but um, enough B- BTS stuff, not, not not the band, just behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, that sort of thing. Um, we start that up on Monday mo- uh, Monday mornings um, next week, too, so we got, like, we're getting four reviews next week, so we're bumping up from two to four I can't wait. I'm excited. It's going to be a lot more work, but um, I love doing this, so I can't wait to come back and do all that next week. It's going to be a very different um, run of things when we come back next week. But again, this has been What's in the Two from Action X. Um, re- yeah, I already rest this up with the break and roll. Um, please subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash Action videos. Um, like, favorite, share this review if you want to, but it helps us get it out there to other people, to other star girls out there. I- I'm really losing it here. My brain is starting to get really fried up here. Um, who have yet to discover us helps us beat up that YouTube algorithm that hates me ever so much, and as well as sharing us for free here on the interwebs. Uh, please ring that bell for notification when our next Stargirl review is live, which is normally each and every Wednesday morning. Uh, and also follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of update for the channel, um, including our brand new Instagram page. Um, so for all you Stargirls out there, I'll see y'all next week for the next episode review, which finally... We get some CG action, finally. Let's see how the CW <laughs> handled the CG budget for the show again. Um, but again, um, for, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.